the Duke and Duchess of Sussex piled the pressure on Spotify last week for hosting disinformation on the platform via Joe Rogan's podcast. They released a statement on Sunday confirming that they had expressed concerns with Spotify bosses. Joe Rogan has faced criticism over his views on the coronavirus vaccine, as many have argued he uses his extremely popular podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, to spread misinformation. Musicians Neil Young and Joni Mitchell asked to have their music removed from Spotify in response to Mr. Rogan's podcast. Daniel Ek, Spotify's founder, has since promised that the streaming platform plans to introduce advisory warnings to any podcast that discusses COVID-19. Likewise, Mr. Rogan has apologized to the company and promised he would try harder to get people with differing opinions on his show, which averages around 11 million listeners per episode. Harry and Meghan struck a deal with Spotify in 2020 worth a reported £18 million. They have released just one podcast to date, released in December 2020. They also signed a multi-million pound deal with Netflix in September 2020, with just two shows announced to date, and none yet released. Royal expert Katie Nichol questioned where the Sussexes might go next after these deals in an appearance on True Royalty TV's The Royal Beat last summer. She said, I think the biggest threat to Harry and Meghan, once these book deals are done and the podcasts are done and Spotify, then what is their currency? A similar sentiment was expressed by royal expert Russell Myers. Speaking on Pod Save the Queen at the beginning of last year, he suggested Spotify are likely to want something a bit meatier in future episodes. He said, I don't think they'll just give out tens of millions of pounds to Harry and Meghan to just churn out podcasts like they did on the pilot episode. He added, as nice as it was, I don't think it's breaking any new ground, and certainly the money that is being given to Harry and Meghan, they are going to presumably want them to do something a bit meatier. It has, in fact, been suggested that Harry and Meghan could learn from Mr. Rogan's example. Historian and broadcaster Dr. Tessa Dunlop wrote in Mail Plus on Monday, what Spotify really cares about is subscribers, and Joe Rogan has brought them millions. Harry and Meghan can express as much concern as they like but their £18 million podcast contract with the audio streaming giant is small fry in comparison. Ditto the music of Neil Young and Joni Mitchell who've abandoned the platform in protest. Mr. Rogan's podcast includes a wide array of guests, with many episodes lasting more than three hours. Recent guests have included Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson and controversial anti-vaxxer Dr. Robert Malone. Drive Dunlop wrote people like Mr. Rogan, have the real power, in a, new media landscape. She said, quite where Harry and Meghan sit in this edgy new world is a puzzle. An £18 million contract is a lot of podcasts even if you arrive on the scene with a massive celebrity head start. They promised shows that would inspire, challenge and educate, but so far have produced almost nothing. How they proceed from here is a conundrum. She added, if Harry and Meghan want to control their new space and really have a voice, they need to start putting the hours in. If nothing else, Joe Rogan's story is a timely reminder of the old idiom, luck is great, but most of life is hard work. Interest in the Sussexes ultimately remains especially, Google data showed searches for Meghan and Harry podcast, skyrocketed by 248% in the wake of their statement. Spotify is currently hiring producers through its podcast arm, Gimlet, to work with Archwell Audio. The jobs are being offered on six-month contracts based in Los Angeles. One advert reads, we're currently assembling a show team that will build and launch a new original show with Archwell featuring the voices of high-profile women. The ideal candidate has experience working with high-profile talent, and an interest in the intersection of social activism and popular culture.